Hey everybody, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So we're on part five of, not necessarily the restoration, but resurrection of this 1996 or 1997 Vespa ET4-125. So you watched the prior parts, got it running, that's always the exciting part, but there's so many other things you gotta take care of before you can bring a scooter up to a roadworthy condition. So I've taken on a test ride and it's pretty treacherous. The front brake goes right to the grip. That's a dangerous situation. And just to show you what's going on with the steering bearings, I'm gonna lift the scooter. Uh, the grease and the bearings are in such poor condition. If you see a new scooter, this, this should like just sweep nice and smoothly. So I know the grease in the front bearings is totally shot or the bearings are rusted. So what we're gonna do is drop the fork uh, disconnect the brakes, which is fine because they don't work. That's the hydraulic brakes and take apart the handlebars, take apart the glove box, and let's just get started right here. So uh, along the way, I'll show you the tools needed and some of the parts I'll use along the way to do this project. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna go over this quickly, pretty much dismantle some of the body work on the scooter. If you look at my past video, I do have a video of how to dismantle all the body work or detrim the complete body work on an ET4. So first you got to get these mirrors off, pretty unique. They're not the same mirrors on the left and right side, so you need a 17. Get that right mirror off because it goes into the brake master cylinder. And you move on to the left mirror and you need a 13 millimeter socket that you access the fastener from somewhere under here. So you got to pry this badge off. This is one of those early ET4s and the badge is kind of a little harder and I used a, a body trim tool, tool trim on the Scooter West web store to find these uh, set of plastic trim tools. Pretty inexpensive but valuable tool to have when you're taking apart a modern scooter here. So take the single screw out uh, pretty much all the way to the LXs, even the GTSs, they have a similar arrangement. Just lift it up and we're, we're also going to need to remove the glove box as well. So pull that screw out. Keep track of all the screws, they're all a little different. There's like a, a seam right here. And just go ahead and lift that up. Uh, the American ones have a different headlight arrangement. These European ones have this four pin connector. So go ahead and disconnect that. I like that old sticker. Verify engine oil level every 2000 kilometers. Uh, it's possible to pull the fork out without removing the glove box, but it's obviously gonna be a lot easier. Glove box just shifts out, <clears throat> pulls away. There's this whole latch assembly that's kind of part of the thing. I'll show you another thing that you'll never see on an ET4. This is a con uh, storage container for fix a flat as a, on the original ET4, kind of a unique setup. So before we can even drop the forks, we gotta get all this stuff away. So. You got a speedometer, mechanical speedometer cable connection right here. Unthreads from the bottom of the speedometer. It just pulls right away. We're probably gonna go ahead and lubricate that cable. Uh, gonna be a couple screws that we need to remove. Get this handlebar plastic out of the way. Again, it is possible to take apart leaving this all here, but I don't really wanna scratch or damage the handlebars. And, and further down the road, I'm gonna also replace all the the switches in here. That's a common problem. If you saw, I think part two, when I was put, uh, put the battery in the scooter, you can see these switches like the horn button. They're not, not working all that well. You know, when the switches sit for about 15 years, they build up oxide. Or even if you have a scooter that's just been out, you know, out in the weather, even as short as five, five years, you know, sometimes the switches are falling apart. You can see now we're just held up by, with a bunch of wiring and all these connectors pull right out. You know, on this right side, there's two, two connectors. You can't really mix them up. On the left side, you can mix them up. So the headlight connector is usually a red, a red housing, and it can be mixed up with the turn signal. And believe it or not, if you mix it up, you know, you have the headlight, you know, you'll have the operation of the headlight with the turn signal switch, you know, high beam, low beam, and then vice versa. And I could see there's corrosion on this, this the terminals here, that's your horn button. So we'll definitely fix that. 
you know, I can see corrosion in there, so that's something I want to fix. Uh, when disconnecting the speedometer, you got to take extra care. Underneath the speedometer is a printed circuit board, a flexible printed circuit board. It's very, very fragile on these old scooters. So there's a little tab that you push and we're able to disconnect the, um, this connector here. And same with this one, just make sure you don't pull the printed circuit board you know, away from the, the body. And on the newer ones, you're gonna have more um, connectors. You know, I think on the ET4s that are sold in the United States, typically they have three connectors. I'm pulling this little cap. If you look right under there, that's where your clock battery is. And you look in the description or just search clock battery on the Scooter West web store, you can get the part number for that clock battery. Uh, changes out, pretty difficult to do. Of course, you've got to take the scooter to this level and I'll likely change that clock battery so that hopefully the clock st still works. Uh, oftentimes you'll replace the clock battery and it still won't work. It means the whole entire clock module is typically corroded or has problems. You can still buy the clock module, but at that point you've got to take apart the whole entire speedometer. You can also order the glass separate. Uh, the speedometer is still in pretty good shape. I know all the little lights worked and everything. The clock's not all that important. Maybe I'll try putting a clock battery in it. So before we take the handlebars off, we're gonna go ahead and drain whatever remaining hydraulic brake fluid there is in there. And I don't think there's gonna be any left. This is zip tie I'm just cutting out of the way. Um, that's your banjo bolt. You wanna make sure this is clean. Using your hands isn't really the best way, but just make sure no dust goes in there. And you have a pair of screws and sometimes these screws are very, very tight. You may want to use an impact screwdriver to get them loose. In a scooter this age, there's a chance I might need to replace the master cylinder and the brake caliper as well. So we'll try bleeding it when we put it all back together and hopefully that will restore the brake operation. Uh, you can see in there, there's some really dark gooey fluid. I'd use either a syringe or you could use a little tube, you know, such as a tube like this, to try to carefully pull the, the fluid out. It's such little fluid in there. You know, it's not doing anything. I'm just gonna sop it up with a shop rag. So make sure you don't get much dust in there or any debris, but you could just soak it up. You can actually leave the rag in there and that's fine as well. Such little amount of fluid. Then we'll have another rag handy and we're going to get a 14 millimeter uh, wrench and disconnect the banjo bolt. So you don't really want the brake fluid dripping all over the painted bodywork of the scooter. So go ahead and tuck a rag like a disposable shop rag. That's fine. And also keep in mind there's two crush washers. Those are washers that seal the um, the brake banjo bolt and you want to have new ones on hand ready to go and I think those are uh, 927 127 I think is a part and I have a pair of those washers ready to go very little fluid coming out of this one just because it's been dry so long there might be even a little rust but yeah a little bit of fluid and sometimes it's even useful to have little rubber caps or you can even take a rag and just put it in here and that will keep any fluid from dripping out. Yeah, and there's already air in the line so we're not too concerned, but I'll keep those just in, in place. Give it a couple pumps, there's nothing coming out of that. So I think we're, we're safe. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and split the, the handlebar pinch clamp. So this is the steel handlebars that are underneath the plastics of the covers on a Vespa, pretty much all the modern Vespas have a similar arrangement. It's almost a copy of the vintage Vespas. They have, except for it's aluminum casting. So got 13 millimeter, oftentimes the newer ones use an Allen, like an eight millimeter Allen. And then you'll also need a 17 millimeter for the nut. So oftentimes it's very, very tight. You're gonna have a couple washers. You're gonna have the nut. You're gonna have the star washer, which is 
A 012543, I think, is the part number. You want to replace that washer because it gets pretty crushed. The flat washer can be reused. So keep that in mind. That's what Piaggio actually specifies changing that star washer every time you take the handlebars apart. And at this point, handlebars should just come right off. And like I said, it is possible to do with all the, you know, the, the rear plastics on the, the handlebars, but you don't really want to damage those parts. So kind of work the handlebars. Sometimes you got to hold the fork and then just go ahead and fold it over. There is a zip tie kind of holds all the cables and everything. And at this point, we're going to drop the fork. And if you look at my uh, video, two videos that show how to chalk up a modern Vespa and use one of the scissor jacks, you'll be able to do this whole entire job in your own home workshop. Um, here, I'm kind of cheating. I got a workshop, you know, a hydro electro hydraulic lift. Um, works a lot easier, but it has a dropout. So obviously it's gonna go a lot smoother for me than doing it at home, but it is possible to do this job at home. You just gotta watch a couple other videos on having the correct setup for dropping a fork on pretty much any Vespa. All right, so I have the scissor jack underneath the scooter. I don't have the rear. It's just on the center stand, which is, works just fine. And we'll just take, take the load right off the front. So front of the scooter is pretty light. You know, you can even do that with a cinder block and you can see this steering is pretty bad right now. So pretty much across the board for all Vespas, all the way back to the 50s, they've been using the same four prong style tool. And on the Scooter West website, Tool SN is the correct part number for this pretty inexpensive tool for dismantling the fork bearings on pretty much any Vespa. So we'll go at the top, just be pre prepared. You don't want to knock the scooter off the lift. And if you're having a little difficulty, you could hit it with a mallet. So just make sure the four prongs stay en engaged. And the top ring nut is referred to as the lock nut. And it's pretty dry. You can just feel it probably was not good grease at one point. So that comes off. Next, you got a washer. That's also key to the fork that keeps it from uh, moving around. And then this last one is what preloads the bearings and it shouldn't be too tight. Uh, it's pretty tight because the grease is just completely there's a lot of resistance here. And at this point, you want to support the front end. And before we drop the fork all the way out, we want to make sure the hose and the brake cable are all disconnected. So, all right. So both the brake hose and the speedometer cable uh, need to be separated. So there's a zip tie that's actually reusable. Pull the brake hose through and then the speedometer cable through. You see there's one more clamp. This is something they only used on the early ET4s. And we'll just take, I think an eight millimeter wrench and loosen the screw that holds that clamp from the front. It's a Phillips screw actually. A little different arrangement than they used on the American market ones. And the reason these cables need to be all loose is is the fork will drop out of this hole right here. So I'll leave that screw in place. And we're getting pretty close at this point. So at this point, take the ring nut all the way off. And obviously it would help you if you had a helper to do this job. And I can tell there's no grease whatsoever on this fork here. So then drop this out and don't allow the, the fork to rub onto the bodywork. Obviously you got the, the line and this grease, look at that bearing, doesn't even move. The grease is so hard. Likely the bearing races are still in good shape. I'm pretty certain we'll be able to uh, salvage the bearing races, but I probably am just gonna put brand new bearings in there. And that's why the, 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 the fork movement is so stiff and difficult, it would be very, very difficult to steer, so. So on the lower bearing race, you know, as long as the scooter hasn't been crashed and this isn't really rusty, most likely we'll be able to clean up 
the race. So the race is this hardened steel ring. There's also this grease cup, and then there's also a race in the frame. Um, we're just gonna put a new bearing because it's probably not worth recovering that, that bearing. Uh, these are cage bearings. Part number on the lower one is a 077023, which is most Vespas use that, that style. On the upper one, they're probably not in that bad of shape, but it's pretty expensive just to replace the whole entire set. This bearing is really, really, you know, like you, I can't even spin the little small balls on the, uh, the cage. And you can buy the whole entire kit, which includes all the parts. We have them available a couple different ways on the Scooter West web store, but the, the complete top bearing set that works on a modern Vespa is a 152024. And I'll show you what's inside this kit here. So you got a brand new set. They're all matched. Of course, you could just buy the bearing itself or even the individual races themselves. Uh, it doesn't include the the, uh, the lock ring, but there's the whole set, just like that. And I'm gonna show how to knock this race out of the frame. So you take something like a brake parts cleaner, you know, something you use, probably shouldn't, I should have gloves on, but being lazy right now, um, and just go ahead and you wanna have a couple rags handy and just wipe all this hardened grease out of the, out of the, um, the race. And it may take quite a bit. You might need to get a wire wheel up in there to really, really clean it. But you can see it's kind of breaking up some of that grease. I don't really want to spray this on the bodywork because, you know, this might attack the paint of the scooter. But pretty much just wipe this out. Like I get, again, I said that this race can be, you could buy this whole bearing set and replace that race. Typically, if the scooter was in a, a wreck and you need to replace the fork because it was bent, you're gonna have a damaged bearing race as well up in here. So, all right, so that's pretty clean right there. Um, this bearing on the lower part, we're gonna do the same thing. Get this sticky old bearing out of here. And pretty much the same thing. You could just, you just gotta break up that grease. And I'm looking at the bearing race. I don't see little pips in the actual hardened bearing race. So that's why I think we'll be able to reuse this bearing race. No problem here. I obviously do that all the way around. Probably a little more thorough than the job I'm doing. I'm just trying to do this quick and interest for the video here. So, so not too bad. So this bearing race, we're going to go ahead and replace this, this race. I'm going to show how you can knock this out. Uh, I do have the factory tool to do it. It's this kind of odd shaped pipe. It's possible to do it with a long chisel or even just a long piece of rebar or pipe. You know, uh, you're definitely gonna have to tap it out. You could, you know, you could get a big flat screwdriver or chisel underneath and tap it all the way out. Uh, obviously it's easier with a factory tool and it just takes some brute force to do the job. So you pretty much, the idea is just tap it out of the way and Obviously you see it's really easy with the factory tool. Um, if you did it with a chisel around, you just work side to side until it pops out. You know, tap it out evenly. You don't want it to get crooked. Uh, it could damage this upper tube right here. And we'll put the new one in. Two ways to put this in. I put a little bit of grease in there before we, we put it in. Is you can find a large socket to tap it in place. You know, ideally some a big socket that's similar diameter and just tap it until it goes all the way home. Or I have the bearing press that pulls the whole thing in. Uh, I'll probably just tap it in place. I think it'll do the job just fine. Uh, keep in mind, you'd also do similar techniques to change out that lower fork bearing. I'll just tell you it's a little more difficult, a little more work to take out that lower bearing. So the original grease was like that white lithium sulfate grease. And obviously you see it dries up. This stuff will just hold up a lot better is the Maxima like waterproof, just a better, thicker grease that works really good on the Vespas. We have it on the Scooter West web store, just part number grease. Put a little grease in, the, you know, in, in the bore right there. So you can see it's sometimes difficult to get it square at first.
Hear that noise? Change, change the tone, that means it's all the way home and seated, so. So we're gonna take our brand new lower bearing, and obviously there's no grease on it. Take a liberal amount of grease and just pack it into this bearing race. You can just go all the way around. And again, I probably should be using gloves, but I'm getting lazy here. I've already got my hands dirty. So go ahead and pack the bearing all the way around. Then take another liberal smear of the grease. You don't wanna to get too crazy if you have way too much grease you end up having grease dripping all over your fender, and that's kind of a mess, so go ahead and just gonna go all the way around. The bearing goes only one way, so the ball, the kind of curve of this uh, race goes up. If you put it upside down, it's not gonna, um, it's just gonna bind up, it's not gonna work correctly, so go ahead and drop the bearing down there. And then we wanna prepare the upper bearing. So this is our brand new upper bearing, and again, it only goes one way. If you have it the other direction, it ends up, you can see it doesn't seat on the bearing race, but when I have it the correct direction, you can see the bearing seats with the race. So um, just either take note of the orientation of how the old one came out, very critical. If you put it all together, you're gonna end up with a steering that just doesn't quite work right. These old Vespas don't have any type of shield, you know, that protect the bearings, and that's kind of partly why the grease dries up after 15, 20 years, but you know, it's kind of to be expected. So I know the bearing needs to go like that. So we're gonna put a little grease on the upper race and have it just all ready to go. Just similar to the lower. Don't, don't need to put too much, but. And just to verify that you got the bearing in the correct direction, I'll just show you how this works. So put the, see how smooth that is right there? Very, very smooth and you can feel you're rolling against the bearings and not sliding against metal. So you wanna have this race handy, ready to go when we slip the fork back into place. And the last one is the race that's in the, in the frame on the lower section. Just give it a good smear of grease. And now we're ready to pop the fork back in. Of course, it's a perfect time if you gotta change a fender. Uh, this is when you do it on a Vespa. And I have prior videos of how to dismantle you know, put a brand new fender, drop the fork, replace the fork. Uh, pretty much the same for any Vespas. Very, very similar to the vintage Vespas, uh, but pretty much the same across the board for all the modern Vespas. So, and then at the top, you gotta just kind of feel your way around. Don't get your finger caught in there, but. And once it pops up, while you're holding the fork, go ahead and thread the upper race back into place. So. And make sure you get enough threads down because otherwise your fender will come crashing into the bodywork of the scooter because of your steering stops. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and tighten this bearing race. And now you can see I'm going up against the resistance. It feels so much better already. This. And is what I like to do is over tighten this. So I'm gonna tighten it a little bit too much and there's gonna be quite a bit of resistance. Go back and forth several times to kind of work the bearings and seat them. Maybe tighten it a little bit more, work it a little bit more. It feels very, very smooth. So much smoother than what it did before. You can see it never did that before. So the brand new grease on the lower bearing and the new, the new uh, rollers and the complete new bearing set up top. This thing is as smooth as new. So, um, I'm just gonna show how to do the quick and dirty way to preload these bearings the correct amount. Um, there are specific torques and there's even a different factory tool for doing this, but it's not 100% critical. So now that we have it tight and we've exercised the bearings, as I like to say, we'll go ahead and break that free. So now you can see there's a lot of resistance in the tool. I'm gonna lower my uh, tire so it's actually touching down here. And, and this is only a few, I don't remember exactly how many inch pounds, but you see how there's very little resistance and then it just stops. So that's about as far as you wanna go, just a little bit right when it stops, that's it. So there's a tremendous amount of resistance where I really gotta fight it, you know, I'm torquing it down. But if you go loosen, so you got very little resistance just going on the threads and then it stops. 
you know, and I'm just using the finger, you know, about finger tight. And that's it. And you don't want to go anymore. And that's about as far as you want to take it. We're going to put this lock washer in place. And it has like a, a tooth that engages with the slot and the threads. And then reuse this lock nut up here. So the lock nut can go much tighter because that keeps everything from backing out. So get our tool on here. And you saw when we broke this free, it was pretty tight. And at this point, you just pretty dang tight. Give it a, just a good, you don't need to beat on it with a hammer, but just give it a, a good muscle and that will be enough of torque. And then we'll double check it. Very, very smooth. I mean, see how, you just see there's almost no resistance, but there's no free play in that bearing. That's exactly the way I want it to feel. So this thing will be a dream to ride now, you know, versus the way the fork bearings were prior. All right, so at this point, we can drop the fork on here and we can get a rough idea of where to set it. So you kind of just work it on here. And the later ones, they do have a dust shield that goes over that bearing. These early ones don't use that. Um, we we'll put the bolt right through in that direction. I got my brand new uh, 012 543 washer, that's that star washer. Put that all in place, discard the old one. And go ahead and start that, that up. And another thing I like to do is you want to pull, see how there's a, it will got kind of seat down, it will pull up a little bit. That, I usually like to have it up or up high. Um, then we'll want to have our 17 millimeter wrench handy. But at this point, I could just tighten it just a little bit. Um, you could see right here, there's a slot that's cut into the handlebars, and there's a slot that's uh, machined into the top of the fork. And that, you have a, a slight alignment. You can see how it's off right there. And if I go, I gotta turn the fork, unfortunately. You'll, you, if you look at it straight, straight on, you'll get that right where it lines up perfectly. And that should be, exactly where it needs to be. Obviously there's a little adjustability if things are just not quite out of whack or machined a little bit off. Uh, not that big of an issue. We're not gonna tighten this fork so tight that it's not adjustable anymore. You know, but you wanna have it tight enough that isn't, doesn't come loose when you're operating the scooter. So I think this is about 30 foot pounds if you do wanna use a torque wrench. Or 25, I think it is, somewhere in there. And you can see it kind of crushes that brand new um, lock washer. That's like... But you should be really close if you get those slots all lined up. And right there is probably good. You could have this little plastic cap that I don't really see too often anymore, but put that on there and it feels really good. So um, next we'll route the hose and the speedometer cable up, hook it up. And then the next video will be bleeding the brakes and see if we can recover these, this brake system. So there you have it, part five. We have nice smooth steering on our older modern Vespa. Uh, something to keep in mind, whether your scooter's up there in the miles, maybe 24 or 30,000 miles, this might be a service you wanna do, or it's just very old and the grease is dried out like this one. So keep in tune for the next video. I'm gonna put all the body work on, on probably part seven of the video, or you could just watch the full D-trim video of the Vespa T4, LX, GTS. They all have some different nuances on how they come apart, but I'll leave the body work off for now. Uh, look out for the next video. We're gonna get this brake system working again. Thanks for watching. This is Robot here from Scooter West and Vespa Motorsport here in San Diego, California. Support this channel by purchase, purchasing products for your modern or vintage Vespa from ScooterWest.com. Uh, we have a full team of phone support to take your orders, unlike any other scooter shop. So that's something pretty different and we ship hundreds of orders daily. So we're kind of number one when it comes to modern Vespas and you have choices with the vintage Vespas and we likely have it on the shelf. Thanks for watching.